Let us pray. Oh Lord, I have no words except those that you give me to say. Enable me to speak your words. Help your people to hear them, that the living word of Christ may be truly spoken, really heard, and grafted into our hearts. Amen. <clears throat> Our Father in Heaven. Yes. Please don't interrupt me while I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? Called who? I'm praying. Our Father in Heaven. There, you did it again. Did what? You called me. You said, Our Father in Heaven. Here I am. What's on your mind? God? Uh, uh, but I didn't mean anything by it. I was, you know, I was just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It, it, it makes me feel good and kind of like getting things done. All right. Go on, then. Hallowed be your name. Hold it. Oh. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be your name. Well, it means... Uh, it, 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 it means... Good grief, I don't know what it means. How should I know? It's just part of the prayer. What does it mean? It means honor, holy, wonderful. Well, that makes sense. I never thought about it, but hallowed, what hallowed meant before. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? What are you doing about it? Doing? Nothing, I guess. I, I just thought it'd be kind of neat if you got control of things down here like you have up there. Have I got control of you? Well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about your temper? You've got a real problem there. You know, then there's your language. Calling people's names. And using my name as a curse word. And what about the kind of books and magazines you read? Stop picking on me. I, I'm just as good as some of the rest of these people in church. Excuse me, it thought that you were paying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones you are praying for. Like, for example. Oh, all right. I guess I do have one or two hang-ups uh, now that you mention it. I could probably name some others. So could I. <laughs> I thought about it, uh, I haven't thought about it very much up until now, but I really would like to come, come cut out some of those things. I would like to, you know, you know, be really free from that stuff. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some victories truly can be won. I'm proud of you. Um, look, Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, I'm talking about more than just bread here, don't you? I'm talking about all your needs, and the needs of people around you, those in your community. You mean the poor? Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, I do. And I need your help to do it. This morning is getting better and better. You need to cut out the white bread. You're getting a little bit podgy around the middle. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What is this, criticize Rick Day? <laughs> Here I was doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden you pick today to break in and remind me of all my hang-ups? Praying is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, 
And here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. Oh, well, I'm kind of scared. Scared of what? I know what you're going to say. Try me in sin. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What about Bert next door? See, I know. <laughs> I knew you'd bring him up. Why, Lord, he's been a pain in my neck ever since he moved into this neighborhood. Loud parties, garbage all over the place, and he's still got my weed whacker. I lent it to him last fall. I've sworn I'm going to get even with him. But what about your prayer? No, I didn't mean it. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying that load of bitterness around inside, is it? No. But I'll feel better as soon as I get even. Boy, have I got some plans for that neighbor. He'll wish he never moved into this neighborhood. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you already are. But I can change that. You can? How? Forgive Bert. Then I'll forgive you. Then the hate of sin will be Bert's problems, not yours. You will have settled your heart. Really? Just like that? Oh, you're right. You always are. And more than... I want to revenge Bert. I want to be right with you. Bert, I want to be right with you. <sighs> All right, I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him. Help him to find the right road in life, Lord. He's bound to be awfully miserable now that I think about it. Anybody who goes around doing the things he does to people has to be miserable. Somehow, some way, Show him the right way, Lord. There now. Wonderful. How do you feel? Hmm. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty great. You know, I don't think I'll have to go to bed up tight tonight for the first time in a long time. And maybe I won't be so tired tomorrow. Or from now on, because I'm getting enough rest. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Oh, all right. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from evil. Good, good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. Oh, well, what do you mean by that? Don't turn on the TV when you know the laundry needs to be done and the house needs to be picked up. Also, about the time you spend having coffee with your friends. If you pack influence of conversation to be positive things, perhaps you should rethink the value of those friendships. Another thing, your neighbour and friends shouldn't be your standard for keeping up. And please don't use me for an escape hatch. Well, I, I, I don't understand that last part. Sure you do. You've done it loads of times. You get caught up in a bad situation. You get into trouble and then come running to me. Lord, help me out of this mess and I promise you I'll never do it again. You remember some of those bargains you've tried to make with me? Yes, yes, I'm ashamed I do. I'm, I'm really, really ashamed, Lord. I really am. Which bargain are you remembering? <laughs> well, there was the night that Lorraine was gone and children and I were at home alone and the wind was blowing so hard and I, I thought the roof was going to come right off the house any minute and there were tornado warnings out and I remember praying oh God if you spare us I'll never skip my devotions again I protected you but you didn't keep your promise did you I'm sorry Lord I didn't but I really am sorry up until now, I thought that if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, then I could do what I liked. I didn't expect anything to happen like it did. 
Go ahead and finish your prayer. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would really make me happy? No, but I'd like to know. I, I want to please you. I can see what a mess I've made of my life, and I can see how great it would be to really be one of your followers. You just answered the question. I did? Yes. The thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me, and I see that happening between us. Now that some of these old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there is no telling what we can do together. Amen. Well, the Lord's Prayer. You know, it's, it's quite an amazing thing, the Lord's Prayer. It's been said by billions and billions of people worldwide. For 2,000 years, ever since Jesus taught his disciples, he has, people have been saying the Lord's Prayer in hospital rooms, in foxholes. People have been saying it in churches like this. People have been saying it from, from uh, in the Crusades, in the Holy Land, in the World Wars. People have said the Lord's Prayer in Afghanistan. When they're in trouble or when they're celebrating something. From monarchs to peasants, people have used this prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us, his very words, the words that came from him. We have been using this prayer. That's an amazing thing. Now there's two things I want you to remember. First of all, it's the first two words, our Father. We are adopted children of God. When, when, uh, actually, can you stand up for a second? <laughs> this is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus taught us, and Jesus told us that we are adopted. If we want to know God, he, Jesus said to us, he said, if you know me, you know my Father. In Romans, it says that we are adopted children of God. Every one of us. Every one of us. And you know what that means? We're brothers, he and I. Good job. Thank you. We are brothers. And you know, we heard it in our little vignette. Do you know what makes God happy? That we glorify him. When Jesus was in his ministry, he spent the first uh, he spent, spent his entire ministry healing people. Making the blind see, the lame walk. There was, I don't know if you remember the story, but when uh, there was a blind man, and, uh, and Jesus made him see. He took some spittle, put it in some blood, or in some mud, wiped it on his eyes, and he could see it. It was amazing. And the people around him said, well, Pastor, who sinned here? Was it, was it the blind man who sinned? Or was it his parents who sinned? And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Nobody sinned. He was blind that I could make him see to glorify God. And that is why we are here. 
we do things not because it's good that, that, that we feel better, but we do things for others to glorify God. That is our job. To glorify our Father. The second thing we also heard in our vignette, and that is all about forgiveness. Anybody been bullied here? Okay. I read a thing on the internet about being bullied. And I'm sure there's some adults who've been pushed around a little bit in their working careers. And the thing about bullies is you really can't change them, can you? You really can't change what they're going to do. But what you can do is change you. Now, we heard about forgiveness. We heard about, about me and my neighbor Bert and how my and Bert still has my weed whacker and his loud parties and his garbage all over the alley. And I can't change Bert. But I can change how I react to all those things. And there's a health lesson as part of this. And the health lesson is I'm gonna feel so much better when I forgive Bert or when I forgive the bully, and then I won't feel so bad, because God is going to forgive me, and He's going to work on hurt. I know it. So remember, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. We heard in the Gospel reading this morning about about the prodigal son. And it's more about God. Or it's just, it's, it's more. And we remember that God is there, or the Father is there, the Son is coming home, He's walking down the path, He's smelling like pigs, He's been out with people that we don't want to even talk about, and what does the father do? The father runs towards him and hugs him in his stench. He hugs him and said, this is my son. This is my son who was lost and is now found. And what does he do? He doesn't say, hey, go have a shower, you stink. No. He says, get a cloak and put it on him. And he put a ring on his finger. And that's what God does for us. He really does. That's what God does. He hugs us in our sin and in our bitterness and in all of those things that He really finds nasty. And He says, You are my child. I want a relationship with you. And that's what the Lord's Prayer is about. That's what our job here is about. Our job is to give glory to God in all that we do, in all that we say. Amen.